Let's take you live from Washington DC this morning in just a matter of hours. Opening arguments begin in the impeachment trial of President Trump. Both sides worked until early this morning voting on rules, who's going to testify and what documents will be seen. If you're going to make a decision about the president's guilt or innocence, you should want to see what these documents say. Now, Ellery, just one of many chippy back and forth between Republicans and Democrats yesterday got heated at times. Yeah, absolutely, guys. I'm going to get more into that in a moment. But first, we've got to show you this new video of President Trump in Switzerland commenting about his legal team in this trial. Doing a very good job. Did you watch the trial? We have a great case. So after 13 hours of debating trial rules, there are two changes that Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell made. Both sides will now get three days to make opening arguments instead of two. Also, evidence from the House impeachment proceedings will be included in the record. Now, there's still a critical decision left, and that's whether or not to allow witnesses in the trial. A decision won't be made on that until later. But things are already getting heated on the Senate floor. Yesterday, Chief Justice John Roberts warned both sides to stop personal attacks. I think it is appropriate at this point for me to admonish uh, both the House managers and the President's counsel in equal terms uh, to remember that they are addressing the world's greatest deliberative body. One reason it has earned that title is because its members avoid speaking in a manner and using language that is not conducive to civil discourse. So again, opening arguments start at noon with House managers starting off. President Trump's defense will likely begin theirs on Saturday. Yeah, we're getting a ton of reaction this morning about the trial. So keep your comments coming. We'll take a look at what you have to say in about 30 minutes. Now here's a look at today's other top stories in your morning rush. A busy week for St. Paul police. They're looking into what led up to two separate deaths. Right now they're looking for the person who shot and killed a man in the Frogtown neighborhood yesterday afternoon. Police say they do not think this shooting was random. And we're learning more about the man who died Monday night. Police say the man tried to rob a Church of Scientology employee. The employee fought back and other church workers came to help. When officers got there, the attempted robber was unresponsive of and later die. The state is one step closer to ensuring every Minnesotan has access to high speed internet. Governor Tim Walz announced a $23 million grant will help fund 30 projects. Those projects will help bring high quality broadband to underserved communities this year. Family, friends and community members are remembering Ron Edwards. He was a prominent voice in the Twin Cities on issues of race, equity and fairness. Edwards was the former president of the Urban League and also also wrote a column for the Minnesota Spokesman Recorder. He was 81 years old. And exciting news for baseball fans. The Twins Ballpark Pass is making a return this year. It will give you access to 80 regular season games at Target Field for $45 a month. The pass provides standing room and ballpark access with a chance to upgrade to an actual seat. You can score the deal now through February 12th and we have a link on our website. And that's your Wednesday Morning Rush. In our digital dive, these headlines are making the rounds online and have a lot of you talking this morning. They claim a small church from the Cottage Grove area is looking to reinvent itself. And by doing so, older members are feeling forced out. The church is saying, though, that's not the case. Now, church leaders at the Grove United Methodist tell us they've been struggling for a while now and regular church attendance in Cottage Grove has declined. So leadership is now taking some action. They're doing a so-called relaunch of the church. Methodist leaders in Minnesota have tried relaunches with other struggling churches before and they say they've been pretty successful. Essentially a relaunch means the Cottage Grove location will close temporarily in June before reopening in December with a new pastor hoping to attract a younger generation. But current members, they're not happy with this decision and say the 15 to 18 month wait is simply too long for them. I feel that's totally age discrimination, just wanting the youth, younger families. Yeah, that's Bill Gackstetter. He tells us he can't stand the thought of worshiping elsewhere during this relaunch. The church says all members, regardless of their age, will be allowed back after the relaunch and said that no one will be turned away during the 15 to 18 month interim period. We got some comments here from our Sunrisers this morning. Brad says the simple need for a church to relaunch says all I need to know about it. And Paul here is a UMC pastor and says it is far more likely there has been a massive misunderstanding than 
It is my colleagues are engaging in age discrimination. It will be a violation of our membership vows and furthermore, will well beyond the heart and spirit of this church and its clergy. Now the Grove has a second Woodbury location where all Cottage Grove members will also be able to worship at any time they want. Church leadership met with Cottage Grove members last night and they plan to have some more discussions in the near future about this because of course people are upset about it. Yeah. Don't, nobody likes change, right? No. Right. And it's tough on a lot of people, but you know, I think they're just trying to freshen up and maybe come up with a new look to get younger people more interested in going to the church. Yeah, but they have to keep the church going yeah, too. Yeah, 15 which to 18, is, it seems like a long mm -hmm. wait long for a lot of folks. Long transition period. All right, Sven, let's go to you now with our one thing weather. Yeah, we're dry in the metro and mild this morning, uh, already up to 30 degrees, but there is some snow showers, some wintry mix falling in the southeastern part of the state if you're headed that direction or coming from there. In the afternoon, we could see a few snow showers here, but also looking at above freezing temperatures later. So the good news, this is missing us right now in the metro, but it is hitting folks waking up in Owatonna this morning. There was a crash there. Uh, really slowing things down for folks traveling 35 around the metro not bad but again here's a live look of that crash on i-35 i'll have another update coming up in a few minutes time to connect the dots where we make the news make sense they are one of the most common causes for crashes according to the national highway traffic safety administration there are more than 800,000 blind spot accidents every year a pennsylvania teen has come up with a solution that's garnering buzz Every year, thousands of drivers are involved in accidents due to obstructions that keep them from seeing oncoming traffic. Advances in automobile technology include ways to help drivers see in areas that were formerly considered blind spots. Here's the connection between those advances and a teenager. A vehicle's design includes pillars that hold the windows in place. While they add to the structural integrity of a car, they can partially block a driver's view of their surroundings. When her older brother started driving, 14-year-old Elena Gassler's concern for his safety drove her to research ways to improve on a car's design. She devised a system using a webcam mounted to the top of a car and a projector that displays images of traffic onto the pillars next to the front windshield. It gives the illusion that the pillar is invisible. The teen's design won her $25,000 from the nation's premier science and engineering competition for middle school students. She plans to submit the idea to automotive companies like Tesla. Mm, pretty creative, a projector. Yeah, I, you know, I uh, had to get uh, the new car I got a couple of years ago had cameras everywhere and it took a while to get used to. Mm -hmm. I didn't like it at first, but now it's quite handy. So right. I'm assuming the same thing with that. Right, you just kind of get used to it and things are changing. Got to evolve with it, right? Yeah, and if it saves a lot, 800,000 mm -hmm. uh, accidents right. a year, that's a good thing. A mysterious and deadly virus has made its way to the U.S. What we're learning about the patient and the steps airports are now taking to stop it from spreading. Can you charge someone for asking a stupid question? Turns out one restaurant in Colorado might have done that. We verify if it's true. And owning your story to create change in your community. We meet a woman who took an idea and ran with it to end human trafficking in this week's Woman Crushing It Wednesday.